Welcome back to Comic Book Hero. <sighs> it's a wild time, guys. It's a wild time. It's probably going to get wilder. You know, when I was reading comic books years ago, there's no such thing as pre-sales. You had to go to the store, get there early, you know, be about your business, get what you were looking for. And the dynamic is totally different today, too. A lot of stores make their money off pre-sales, variant covers, things that just didn't exist back then. It's a different animal now. Totally different animal. It's a hard one to ride. But what happened over the last couple of weeks, okay, I'm pretty certain you heard about it. If you didn't, you're going to hear about it now. And this is one of the reasons why you got to be careful. See, the idea with the pre-sale is that regardless of whatever that book is going to sell for later, the money is locked in for the store. So you get a really nice cover, say like Amazing Spider-Man 800, done by Gabriel Delato. Hey, everybody loves this guy's art. You know, people, people don't, even people who don't like his art, they still want his art because they can sell it to other people. Okay, and he's churning this stuff out. He's not always going to be able to do this. So you get a cover like that, put the trade dress on it, you do the pre-sale, and your pre-sale numbers are great. You're going to sell this for 40, 50, in some cases, maybe even 100 bucks, depending on where this person is. If they have access, they probably won't, they may not pay for it. But if they don't, and it looks good, and everybody else is selling out, hey, and that's something a lot of guys don't understand. You'll look and say, why is this guy selling it for 100? It's 40 over here, and it's 50 over here. Hey, those are going to sell out at some point. And then the only thing left are the $100 books. So they just already know what they're going to be getting later on. Ugh. So, you know, guys took money and they bought the pre-sale book and they bought it with the trade dress. Okay, if you bought the 40 or the 50 or the 100, whatever, you need some time to try to flip that book if you're one of these flippers. I've never advocated it, but it's still part of what we live with today. So, you bought the book, you're trying to flip this whole thing now. Uh-oh, right on the heels of that one with the trade dress, what came out? The Virgin variant cover. And even I was a little bit surprised by it because I was looking around and I didn't see any, I didn't see anything virgin. There's usually one, there's usually offered about the same time. This one actually came out right after and the pre-sales for it again went. So if you had the trade dress, you're stuck with it now. And if you paid a premium for it, 100 or better, good luck getting that back as the, hey, nobody's going to come over and invest that much money on the trade dress when everybody wants the virgin cover and the virgin cover is going for two, 300 in store. And uh, it's just a hard one to look at. But this is, again, one of the reasons why I never advocate this type of stuff. I understand if you're in a situation where you can't get to the books, okay? But paying these absorbent amounts for a pre-sale, look, you know, join an online join an online comic book you know, place or something of that nature. Put your orders in. Don't do pre-sales, but do, a, do your pre-order. You can go get previews. All right, you can get the, you can get most of the stuff online. If you see something, if you like it, see about putting that in, and you'll probably get a better discount than going through the pre-sales. I mean, those pre especially those auction pre-sales, they can be off the wall, and all that we're doing is setting people up for buyer's remorse at the end of the day. Most of these guys, a good portion of the people who are doing the pre-sales, are not reading the books. They're just looking to flip them later and make a profit on them. All right, myself, I buy books because I think they're going to appreciate in value. But my buyer's remorse tends to be a lot less because I pay a lot less. If I'm paying through the nose for a book and then I can't sell it for any particular reason, even if I grade it, yeah, I'm probably going to scale back on how much I buy. I buy a lot. I scale back. That's a significant chunk to a lot of somebody else's business, somebody else's comic store. If that's widespread, yeah, we have another implosion on our hands. So, hey, I know we all want the books, but try to be as savvy about it as possible. You see a pre-sale, it's going a little bit high, maybe you don't need that book. Uh, maybe you hold on, you wait a little bit. And if that's the case, maybe people are more kind with their pre-sales. You know who you are, okay? You're taking guys for a ride, and then at the end of the day, you know, look, it's not a spigot of money. Eventually, guys get hip to it, and then where are we? Especially when people are buying it for the cover and not for what's inside of it. That, again, is a very, very big difference from when I started Comic Collective. Well, hey. That's one to grow on. I'll catch you next time.